Scatterplot charts are now available in PowerView for Excel 2013. Scatterplots are a great way to see how two correlated variables affect each other. For instance, is there a correlation between age and income? So that as your age rises, so does your income. And if so, is there a point at which this relationship changes, such as after retirement age? This simple demonstration will show how to animate the scatterplot chart over time to see how the relationship between correlated variables may change over time to give analysts an idea of where to drill to understand how these different points of data relate to each other. As you can see from this slide, you're required to have Excel 2013 Professional and the AdventureWorks Data Warehouse. This is the website where you can download the AdventureWorks Data Warehouse files to install on any version you have of SQL Server. In this simple example, we will be using three tables from AdventureWorks. The date dimension, the sales territory dimension, and the internet sales fact. Open up Excel 2013 and let's get going. We'll start by creating a blank workbook. From the data tab, we're going to connect to our local SQL Server just like this. After you select your database, Make sure that you check the box to enable the selection of multiple tables. Then select the three tables which I mentioned. Click Finish and then choose a Power View Report. The blank report will show the three tables that you've selected. One thing to notice is that the date dimension has a lot of fields, but it doesn't have any easy ones that allow us to sort over years by month. So what we're going to do first is we're actually going to create one. Let's go to Power Pivot and open up the Power Pivot window where we're actually going to use a DAX expression, D-A-X, to create a new column, a new calculated column, inside our date dimension. After the last column in the table, click on Add Column, and then you'll be able to enter the DAX formula. This formula is going to multiply the calendar year by 100, and then add the month number to that value to basically give us a way to sort by year and month. Click Enter once you've finished entering your formula, and it will populate the new field. Right-click the header of the field to give it a new name that makes more sense than calculated column 1. In this case, it's year-month. You can now close the Power Pivot window, which brings you back to Excel, and PowerView asks you to refresh the data. You can check out the date dimension now and you'll see your new calculated field at the bottom. So let's start building the chart. The main number we're interested in is the sales amount. That's our main measure and that's, what, that's going to become the x-axis of our chart. So when we check that, notice that it creates a table over in the blank canvas. Let's resize this table. On the Other Chart button, we're going to choose Scatter to make this a scatter plot chart. You can see at the bottom that our x-axis is the sales amount. In this first example, let's make the count of customers 
our y-axis to see how amount of sales is correlated to the number of customers. Notice that I changed that to a distinct count. Our details in this example are going to be our sales territory region to see how the count of customers and the amount of sales are correlated by region. In this example, I'm going to use the quantity in the orders to set the size of the bubbles on the chart. Since we haven't done anything with the date dimension, at this point the numbers reflect all sales over all time for all territories. I'm going to hide the filters and resize things, remove my title, and just make this thing a little cleaner and larger so that we can view our data. Now the piece de resistance is adding the year month to the play axis. This will allow us to view the changes of the data over time. Notice that another axis was created at the bottom of the chart and it's got a little play button next to it so that you can actually click that and view the changes over time of your data as the count of the customers and the sales amount change across the different territories. Remember that the size of each bubble corresponds to the quantity sold. But with a quick change here, I can make the order quantity the y-axis and I can actually make the count of customers reflected in the size of the bubbles. You can see when I play this that it took a few years for sales to really kick off, but you can tell at the point at which they do start to grow, which happens about right now. Please remember to subscribe.